Today, we're talking about a special holiday called Pie Day. Sounds yummy, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it is not about the pies that you eat. It is even spelled differently. But Pie Day is always celebrated on March 14th, or 314. And here is why. Pie is a math term, and one that you will study in middle school and high school. But here's what you need to know about it right now. It is all about circles. Pi is a relationship between the circumference, or the distance around the outside of a circle, to the diameter, or the distance across the inside of the circle. I know that's confusing. You don't need to remember that right now, but I do want to show you the symbol for pi. Here it is. Okay, here's the other thing you need to know. When you divide the circumference by the diameter of any circle, no matter how big or how small, the answer is always equal to pi, or 3.14, which is why we celebrate Pi Day on March 14th, 3.14. All right, here is one last thing you need to know about pi. Pi is a very, 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 very long number. In fact, it keeps going and going and going and never, ever stops. We call that infinite. But the first three numbers are the ones we normally use, so we shorten pi to 3.14. Today, we're going to graph the numbers of pi, at least the first several of them, and we'll be creating a bar graph with them. Then we will turn it into a beautiful city skyline. When you look at a city at sunrise or sunset, often the buildings look black against the sky and the beautiful colors of the sky really stand out. That's what we're going to make. Here are some examples of city skylines and inspirations for our painting today. Look at the different colors you could choose. This one has mostly yellows in it. And here's one that adds oranges and reds. The last one we're gonna look at is one at twilight where you use mostly blue and purple. All right, let's get started. Hey friends, welcome back. Caleb is here. He's going to help us out with our Pi Day project today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to do a little math with it too, but I promise it's not going to feel like math because it's going to be fun. You ready? Yep. All right. Okay, here's what you need for today. You need some graph paper, a pencil, and um, a permanent marker. You also are going to need a piece of watercolor paper that is the same size as your graph paper and some watercolor paints. So we'll get to that later. We have to do the first part, which is graphing the numbers of pi. So we're each gonna have a piece of paper here. I'm using bigger graph paper. So Caleb is going to show you here what we're gonna do. Caleb, take a pencil. Okay. And when we graph the numbers of pi, we're going to start here at the bottom of the page and we're going to count, just all we have to do is count up. The first number of pi is three. So we're going to count up three. One, two, three. So we're going to make a line at the top of that and just kind of go like that. If you can see, maybe I should do it with a permanent marker so you can see. One, two, three blocks. Okay. The second is a decimal, so we're just gonna skip the decimal. The second number is a one, so we, all we have to do is count up one. Fill it in. The third number is four. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna count up four and fill that in. Just kinda quickly. We'll fill it in more later, but this is just so we can quickly graph it. We're gonna continue on until we get to the second six. So you're gonna finish over here at the end and that'll be the second six in the number. So it's gonna go 3.1415926535897910111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111
kind of helps to make a little dot in each one as you're counting up before you kind of fill that in more. Just a little tip for you. Okay, I'm done and Caleb's done graphing. I'm not done. Now, what I did at the when I was finished is I went back and I made an outline around each of the bars. Just a black outline with your marker around each of the bars. So Caleb's going to do that now real quick. All right, awesome. Now what we have to do is transfer our graph onto the watercolor paper. If you see what you did is you made a skyline, a city building skyline. That's what it looks like anyway with your graph of pi. So what we're gonna do is transfer it onto watercolor paper. And there's a really easy technique to do that. So what you're gonna do is flip your paper over on the back and you're just going to take your pencil and hold it kind of sideways and scribble over that thick black line we just made the whole way around like this. Caleb, go ahead and do it. Put, we scribbled over the lines on the back, just the outlines. And we flipped it back over. Now, you're going to take your watercolor paper and line up the bottom left corner and the bottom edge. And then what you're going to do is take your pencil and you're going to press hard and you're going to trace over that thick black line that we made around the edges of the building. And because you put pencil lead on the back of these lines, when you press with your pencil this time, it'll transfer that graphite onto the watercolor paper. Let me show you. When I pulled it up, do you see how now the lines are on the watercolor paper? Pretty cool, huh? It's how you transfer an image. It's one of the ways you can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You guys line up your watercolor paper and then draw back over top along those lines. All right, we have our skylines have been transferred, all right? And so now what we're going to do is take our marker again and we're going to go over those graphite lines with our marker this time. And then we'll fill all this in with black. So we're going to trace over with our marker and then all of this we're going to fill in with our black marker. It's really important to use your permanent marker because after this, we're going to use watercolor paint of right over top of it. And if it's a permanent marker, the permanent marker won't bleed into the watercolor paint because it's water. So go ahead and trace over every line first, just like that. And then we'll fill all of this space in with black permanent marker. Make sure you make little marks back and forth like this and get all the little white spaces filled in. You can take your time with this. Don't rush it. Like, you want it to look good. So make sure you make little strokes back and forth right next to each other and fill in all of that white space. All right, Caleb is done with his skyline. 
I am done with mine, filling mine in. He said he did a better job than I did. True. Probably true. All right, so just make sure you take your time on it, fill in all the little white spaces. You want it to be nice and black. Okay. Now we're going to take our watercolor paint. Before we do that, I'm going to spray our papers just so they're nice and wet. Whenever we're going to make a sky, it helps to have the paper a little bit wet first so that the colors can blend together nicely. Because you don't see really harsh lines in the sky, do you? They all kind of blend together. Now, it's up to you how you want to paint it. If you want it to be a nighttime sky or a morning sky. Caleb, what are you going to make yours? Night or morning? Um, can I do like a dusk or a dawn? Yeah, sure, whatever. So I have some paints here. I have yellow, pink, purple, blue. Um, if you're going to start with yellow, if you want yellow in your sky, you're going to want to put yellow near the bottom because that's where the sun goes down. As it gets further up, then it turns into red and pink and then purple and blue as it goes further up. If you're doing a nighttime sky, you're going to start uh, maybe with some of the lighter blues down at the bottom and then get darker blue and purple near the top. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so um, I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow near the bottom like it's, mine's going to be like the sun's going down. Caleb says he wants to start with like a morning. And then I'm going to add a little orange right next to that. See how because the paper's wet, the colors are going to blend together. But the black doesn't bleed because it's a permanent marker. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to get some, some of the pink and put that right next to the orange. And keep moving the color around because, again, because the paper's wet, the color is going to blend really, really nicely. Make sure you rinse your brush between colors. Now I'm going to go with But what, or Do I do orange next if it's morning? You decide what you want no, no, next. No, no, no. Like, what do I do? Be honest. I would do some lighter, like, yeah. You would do orange even if it's the morning? Yeah, probably. But then once I get to where, where you're at, it has to change a little bit. Maybe some more pinks for the morning. More pinks? The sunrise is a little more pinks, I feel like. Okay, then I'm going to the blues up here. For my sunset. And as I get at that very, very top, I'm going to put the darker blue up here. And just kind of blend it down a little bit. Okay. To get mine to blend together just a little bit more, I'm going to spray it, give it one more spray with my spray bottle. More pinks. It's pinks right here. Like along it, like right yeah, here? Yeah, that's what I would do. That's what you would do. Okay, why don't you move yours over so we can see what you're doing. Okay, Caleb's looks beautiful. It looks like the same as yours, though. <laughs> um, if you'd like, I can bring around salt, and you can sprinkle some coarse kosher salt on your papers. It looks like that. And that will kind of make it, um, give it some extra texture, if you'd like. You don't have to. It'll make it kind of look like a starburst effect. Do you want salt? And when it dries, it'll look like our... A little bit of salt, maybe. Not a lot. Like, not near as much as you put on. Okay. It'll look like a cityscape. Because these are the buildings, and we have the sky, the beautiful sky in the background. So, this is it, friends. This is our Pi Day cityscape landscapes. We graphed the numbers of pi and turned them into buildings for our cities. And then we did a really pretty sky background, a really like sunset or sunrise, or you could do nighttime, then you wouldn't use any yellow. Um, it is up to you how you want to do that. I'm anxious to see how your masterpieces will turn out. Uh, so thanks, Caleb, for your help today. We're done.